say prolapse prolapse what is a prolapse prolapse is herniation of pelvic organs okay and uh, this is her this herniation is due to damage to structures that support the pelvic organ or the pelvic floor okay as you know we, we have what we call the pelvic floor in the pelvis that that structures that support and protect the pelvic organs like the uh, bladder the uh, urethra the rectum and so on okay so what are the structures that uh, support the pelvic organ the first is the fascia the fascia of the pelvic floor and we have two uh, fascias the urogenital diaphragm and the endopelvic okay the urogenital diaphragm and the endopelvic also we have nerves in the pelvic floor that support the pelvis ligaments okay and the most important is the cardinal ligament and uterosacral ligament the cardinal and uterosacral ligaments these two ligaments are responsible uh, for the support of the uterus okay so if we have uterine prolapse then most of the times we have cardinal or uterosacral uh, ligaments weakness or something okay nerves ligaments and pelvic floor muscles the most important pelvic floor muscles elevator and eye muscles okay elevator and eye muscles and you can go back and revise these muscles okay so these are the structures the fascia the nerves the ligaments the pelvic floor muscles that support the pelvis so that the, we don't have any prolapse but if we have damage to these structures then uh, we are to have prolapse okay so what are the types of uh, prolapse we have anterior prolapse posterior prolapse uterine prolapse and what we called vault prolapse okay anterior prolapse is the prolapse of the bladder cystocele okay or the urethra urethrocele or both of them posterior prolapse is about enterocele small intestine and rectocele the rectum okay uterine prolapse is uterine prolapse and vaginal prolapse after hysterectomy you know sometimes we do hysterectomy and the vagina and part of the cervix is still there if the vagina uh, <coughs> protruded outside then we have what we call vault prolapse okay what are the risk factors risk factors of a prolapse the first one is trauma okay trauma to pelvic floor is very important risk factor of pelvic prolapse advanced age okay especially in menopause okay because women on menopause age has less estrogen okay and more prolapse for that okay so trauma to pelvic floor and uh, advanced age menopause and parity parity okay multiple just uh, multiple pregnancies okay more than one time because pregnancy by itself is a risk factor for prolapse and after pre pregnancy or the management of pregnancy is also a risk factor for prolapse okay bad obstetric management bad obstetric management okay but what do we mean by bad obstetric management we mean it out okay difficult or traumatic labor difficult or traumatic labor episiotomy without indication okay you know we have what we call episiotomy and episiotomy should be done with an indication if we do uh, episiotomy without an indication then it is a risk factor for prolapse pushing in wrong phase okay when the woman is in labor sometimes doctor all the times doctors ask her to push and these pushes should be uh, concord uh, concord with the uh, contraction phase if the pushing was in wrong phase then we have bad obstetric management and the risk factor of 
uterine prolapse. So trauma, advanced age, menopause because of less estrogen, multi parity, a lot of uh, pregnancies, bad obstetric management, and of course congenital weakness, okay, like collagen disorders, collagen disorders. This congenital weakness may lead to uh, uterine prolapse, okay. And the last risk factor is increased intra-abdominal pressure. Okay, increased intra-abdominal pressure will apply forces on the pelvic floor, and these forces, these forces are stress. Okay, and that will lead uh, eventually, in lots of cases, to pelvic prolapse. So, what things increase intra-abdominal pressure, like chronic diseases? Chronic diseases like what? Like COPD, asthma, chronic cough. Okay, all these diseases will apply a more. Uh, intra-abdominal pressure and more risk factor for prolapse, obesity, abdominal mass. As you notice here, all these things just apply uh, apply a pressure on the pelvic floor. Smoking also is a risk factor for prolapse. So let's revise uh, these uh, rapidly. Trauma, advanced age, menopause, the most important three. Parity, bad obstetric management, okay, by doing uh, episiotomy haphazardly, okay, difficult or traumatic labor, pushing on rain phase, congenital weakness, okay, increased intra abdominal pressure, uh, like in chronic diseases like COPD and asthma, abdominal masses, obesity, and smoking. Okay, now let's move the, to the symptoms. Okay, let's just zoom it out. The symptoms of a prolapse. What are the symptoms of prolapse? First of all, prolapse may be asymptomatic okay but when a prolapse uh, symptomize it, uh, the symptoms uh, are mainly pressure symptoms okay so the uh, feeling of mass protrusion mass protrusion pelvic pressure pelvic pressure aggravated by straining okay uh, and long standing and heavy activity or heavy things lifting okay all these are pressure symptoms okay L uh, urinary and fecal symptoms like what okay the first thing i want you to know that n not in every prolapse we uh, we should suspect urinary or fecal symptoms but in a lot of cases we have urinary symptoms like incontinence for example frequency urgency uh, recurrent utis a urinary retention and so on okay these are the urinary symptoms what about fecal symptoms we have a pressure uh, we have constipation and sorry a difficult bowel evacuation okay and sometimes we have what we call a finger a maneuver to assist uh, the uh, defecation or what we call splinting splinting okay the, the patient uh, protrude his fingers uh, into the rectum to assist uh, defecation in uh, cases of prolapse okay and uh, what also we may have symptoms we may have bleeding due to the critical ulcer okay and applying estrogen is uh, uh, of special benefit here okay low back pain also is an important symptom of prolapse and the features of this pain is that uh, it relieves with reduction okay if you re reduce the prolapse and it will relieve uh, never ever below sacrum okay this low back pain is never will go below sacrum but in cases of herniation this herniation for example uh, it descends to thighs to the legs and so on okay and you can't distinct it uh, just uh, specifically so these are the features of the low back pain with the prolapse okay so what are the symptoms with the prolapse the pressure symptoms uh, bleeding and uh, low back pain pressure symptoms like mass protrusion and pelvic pressure feeling of heaviness urinary and fecal symptoms okay these are uh, the symptoms 
What about sexual symptoms? Do we have sexual symptoms? No, no direct sexual symptoms, but sometimes patient comes to you with a feeling of embarrassment uh, to have sexual intercourse, okay? Okay. Now, let's move to... <coughs> sorry, to physical examination of prolapse. The important points about physical examination of prolapse is Sims speculum to do Sims speculum examination with Valsalva maneuver. Okay, Sims, if we apply Sims on posterior vaginal wall, then we uh, can see anterior vaginal wall prolapse. Okay, and vice versa. Okay, if we apply Sims on the anterior vaginal wall, then we can see posterior vaginal wall prolapse, rectocele, enterocele. Okay, this is uh, Sims speculum, and we have to ask the patient to uh, cough or to make an intraabdominal pressure. Also, by, manu by manual examination, it is important to know uterine prolapse. Uterine uh, prolapse. Uh, in Sims uh, speculum examination, we may see incontinence and cystocele, okay, in anterior. Uh, prolapse we may say incontinence and urinary uh, incontinence okay what about st about staging of prolapse we have a lot of methods or uh, uh, ways of staging of prolapse uh, we have Baldwin Walker halfway and nowadays pop Q is the most used I want to talk to you about Baldwin Walker halfway classification and you just go back to understand pop q uh, classification uh, in stage zero in balden walker halfway we have no prolapse at all in stage one we have a prolapse with the most distal part of a prolapse is one centimeter above the hymen so this is the hymen this is the uh, most distal part of prolapse is more than one centimeter this is one centimeter it is more than one cent one centimeter when it descends more to be less than one centimeter uh, be, uh, above the hymen then it is stage two distal part is less than one centimeter above hymen okay when it descends more to be more than one centimeter post hymen okay below hymen then we have stage three. The most distal part is more than one centimeter below the hymen. Below the hymen. So zero, we have no prolapse. Uh, one uh, is one centimeter above the hymen. Uh, two is one centimeter uh, uh, less than one centimeter below the hymen uh, or above the hymen. And in three, one centimeter below the hymen. In four, we have what we call complete or presidentia. Okay. In the next video, I'm going to talk about management of prolapse. Thank you very much.